In this chapter, we introduce the important concepts of classes and objects. C-sharp is an object-oriented programming, and to use the language to its fullest extent, you need to understand as much as possible about classes and objects. In this first lesson, we're going to present an overview of classes and objects and some definitions and explanations. And then in the rest of the chapter, we'll create some very simple classes as means of a demonstration. An object-oriented program is a collection of objects interacting with each other. We're already familiar with the idea of objects because in the real world, everything we deal with is an object. The book that I'm looking at on my desk is an object. The people that I talk to every day are objects, although we don't like to refer to people as objects. But objects are everywhere. And by objectifying our programs, objectifying our computer programs, we bring a useful model into the programming process that helps us deal with complexity. An object encapsulates state, which is just data, and behavior, which include the operations or the things that an object does. Every object has some sort of state, what it's doing at the present time, its name, its age, things like that. And of course, objects have behaviors, things that they do. A car drives down the road, for example. That's all we do when we're creating objects. We create a single entity that includes both data and operations. A class defines an object's behavior and state. So the class is the definition of an object. A class can be defined or viewed as a user-defined type in a more technical sense. When we create a class, we're creating a type that we can use just like it's a built-in type like int or boolean. Classes can be linked together using a hierarchical structure. This is already well known in the real world and it works in programming as well. An example might be we have a overall class called vehicle and vehicles can be broken down into cars, bicycles, lawnmowers even, golf carts, things like that. So that's what I mean by a hierarchical structure. Classes higher up in the structure pass state and behavior to lower classes. So for example, when I define a vehicle, a vehicle has certain characteristics. And those characteristics can then be passed down to other types of vehicles, such as cars or a train, for example. An object-oriented program is a collection of objects where each object has its own set of responsibilities. So rather than try to mix everything up together, when we write an object-oriented program, we create objects that have strict sets of responsibilities. This way we know when something goes wrong in a program, we know where to look to find the error. The error is in the object that's responsible for that behavior. Objects form the basis of reusable software since an object can be used in any program that needs the object. That's another great benefit to object-oriented programming. Once we've created a class, then we can use that class and the objects that are based on it in any other program that we want to use. So that once I create, for example, an employee object, I can use it in a human resources program, I can use it in a payroll program, and I can use it in any other program that involves employees. That's a brief overview of classes and objects. The rest of this chapter will involve looking at how we actually create classes, and we'll begin that task in the next lesson.